inviting us to this press conference. So I'm going to talk about um, our work on lenalidomide, what was um, uh, an extensive collaboration between our lab, what is the lab of Benjamin Ebert at the Brigham and Women's Hospital, and the Broad Institute in Cambridge. So um, yeah, there were already some introductions about lenalidomide, so I can keep that short here. But uh, lenalidomide is an FDA-approved drug for, uh, for multiple myeloma, where it shows really remarkable response rate between 70 and 90 percent. And um, Dr. Facon just gave a nice example of that again, that this is a really effective drug in multiple myeloma. It also has some activity in other major B-cell lymphomas, like mantle cell lymphoma, where it recently got improvement, and chronic lymphocytic leukemia, albeit less than in um, multiple myeloma. And the other disease where lenalidomide is active is myelodysplastic syndrome with 5Q-. Um, but besides these drugs, or the, besides, besides these, the, the diseases um, depicted here, um, lenalidomide has really been studied in more than 500 clinical trials, and um, including a lot of different tumor types and cancers and other hematologic diseases. And so far, for none other disease or for none other cancer, these response rates um, have, have achieved, so any response rates com like in multiple myeloma or B-cell lymphomas. So we think that on one side that might be disappointing for the, for the drug not being active in other disease, on the other side, I think it's another example how specific lenalidomide is and how specific the, 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 the mode of action of lenalidomide must be. So lenalidomide belongs um, to the so-called immunomodulatory drugs together with thalidomide and pomalidomide. And thalidomide was um, synthesized in the 60s and became notorious because, so it was um, designed as a sedative um, and also used for treating morning sickness in pregnant women. And it, um, because it's highly teratogenic, what no one knew at that time point, it caused more than 20,000 birth defects and, and ended up in the so-called um, thalidomide tragedy. So mm -hmm. thalidomide was then banned from the um, banned as a as a drug, but later people found out that thalidomide um, is active in in different kind of cancers and investigated its um, its activity there, and so. Based on thalidomide, later cell gene um, obtained um, this compound and developed more potent analogs of thalidomide, what is lenalidomide and um, pomalidomide. So although being known for more than 50 years, no one actually knew how thalidomide works. How does thalidomide, thalidomide um, cause these birth defects and how does it work in cancer? And um, this was basically due because there was the, the primary target, so where does thalidomide or lenalidomide bind to in the cells, was unknown. And this changed in 2010 um, when Ito uh, from, a, from, a, from um, nicely showed um, that thalidomide um, binds to, an, to, a, to a protein or two proteins, CRBN and DDB1. And um, these CRBN and DDB1 form together with two other proteins, the so-called E3 ubiquitin ligase. So, and they did not only show that it binds to CRBN and DDB1, but it, that it, this binding of thalidomide to this complex and um, modification of that complex led to the teratogenicity and was the first evidence after 50 years how this drug might cause um, the teratogenicity. So, and E3, okay, so and then a little bit later, um, two other groups have shown that um, um, CRBN is also necessary for thalidomides or lenalidomides activity in multiple myeloma, um, suggesting that this interaction is also responsible um, for the anti-tumor effect seen by um, immunomodulatory drugs. So E3 ubiquitin ligases um, are enzymes in the body or in the cell that um, target proteins. So proteins bind to these um, complexes enzymes and the specificity is determined by the so-called substrate receptor, what in that case is CRBN. <coughs> Sorry. And once a protein binds to that um, complex, it, um, ubiquitins are attached and it forms these ubiquitin chains, as you can there, see there. And ubiquitinated proteins usually undergo proteosomal degradation. So the cell gets rid of these proteins by that mechanism. And Due to that specific substrate receptor, this is a very specific mechanism because it only targets the proteins that are binding to that ubiquitin ligase. So this was known, and, um, but what wasn't known were the targets, which, which are the substrates of these enzymes that, um, that, are, that are ubiquitinated by that ubiquitin ligase. And furthermore, it was also not really known what immunomodulatory drugs do to that um, complex. 
And the paper by Ito in 2010 kind of suggested that it inhibits that complex, and we worked for a long time on that, and then did some um, experiments, some proteomic experiments, where we investigated all targets on a global level in the multiple myeloma cell line, all of the targets that get ubiquitinated and finally depleted in the cell. And I don't want to go into the details of these um, mass spectrometry um, studies, but you can, so I think the first general message is that the number of, um, of reaggregated proteins by lenalidomide is, is very low. It's less than 0.1% of the proteins in the cell. And we found two proteins um, that were differentially ubiquitinated called IKZF1 and IKZF3, which are lymphoid transcription factors, and um, found at the same time that the protein level of these um, proteins decrease. And in the third experiment, we also showed that these proteins bind to CRBN, the substrate receptor of that complex, and that this binding was um, improved when, by the addition of lenalidomide. So, we then did some validation experiments in different cell lines by Western blots, and you see here that IKZF1 and 3 protein levels in a dose-dependent fashion de um, decrease. Um, this was also true for primary patient samples. And interestingly, when we compared these three compounds, and I mentioned before that lenalidomide, or like there's a difference in their clinical efficacy, that the depletion of these two proteins correlated well with the um, pot potency in, um, in, in patients. Um, we finally showed that this is really like due to ubiquitination and that this is, um, that, that IKZF3 is a direct substrate of that ubiquitin ligase. So the question was, IKZF1 and 3 are known to be tumor suppressors in the context of acute lymphoblastic leukemia, but it's also known that IKZF1 and 3 um, prevent the um, differentiation of, of immature or progenitor lymphoid cells to um, more differentiated cells. And all the disease where lenalidomide is active, multiple myeloma, CLL, mental cell lymphoma are rather mature B cell lymphomas. So we invested this by um, using SHRNAs, and you can see here that um, targeting these two proteins, transcription factors IKZF1 and 3, um, depleted selectively in cell lines that are lenalidomide sensitive, while lenalidomide insensitive cells um, did not die after knocking down these um, two proteins. We also showed that with the dominant negative mutant. And finally, we could show that when we overexpressed the mutant we, we, we cloned, um, that is an ICROS3 mutant um, that is not responsive to lenalidomide, that this rescues uh, multiple myeloma cells, um, further suggesting that these are indeed the targets. So in summary, um, so the mechanism, we think that lenalidomide binds to this complex, it promotes binding of these two transcription factors. These two transcription factors get depleted in the cell. This is responsible for the effect in multiple myeloma and B-cell um, lymphomas. And also, I didn't show the data here, but also might be implicated into the um, known effect of lenalidomide to induce IL-2 release. And the direct implications of our work, I think, now for multiple myeloma is Maybe we can use IKZF1 and 3. This needs to be investigated now as predictive markers. So maybe we can see expression levels or find mutations that predict the response to lenalidomide. But beyond that, so we think that this is the first drug that's described to increase the ubiquitin ligase activity. And um, we hope that this mechanism um, might help to develop new drugs that similarly target um, other undruggable proteins. And with that, I'd like to thank.